Paul the apostle, the one we call the apostle of grace, who brought the message of grace. And you see his account in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And how that though he was not one of them, but this was handed over to him. He, he saw it in the revelation. He captured it, explained it. And you still have issues. Then I think one of the days when the Lord will give us the time, the grace to expand into that, we will do that. But for today, I want to touch a particular area that is always... Look at the other hand and you find me. will tell you don't collect it, this is poison. Because in all the world, in all the beautiful gifts you find, the only thing that you came with was bread and money. Bread and coke. So where were you coming from? He came with bread and wine and was the priest of the Most High God. Verse 19. Abraham, Abraham was recognized this guy. The moment he came in, Abraham didn't ask him, where are you from? 
there was a kind of knowing on the man. A knowing that this guy came from somewhere. There was a knowing, an acceptance in the spirit of Abraham that this guy is not ordinary. The Bible says when he saw Abraham, blessed him and said, blessed be Abraham of the most high God. Remember, this guy is the priest of the most high God. And he blessed Abraham as the, as the, as the what? The Abraham of the most high God. So both of them are originated from where? The most high God. So the most high knows the most high. He calls him possessor of heaven and earth. That means the sea of all of heaven and earth was given to Abraham. If Abraham didn't know that day, he knew. He gave him. He said, you are the possessor of heaven and earth. They belong to you. Glory to God. And we are sons of Abraham by faith. So we are possessors of heaven and earth. Can you shout amen? amen. If your two hands say they are mine, they are mine, they are mine. Verse 20. And blessed be the most high God, which had delivered enemies into thy hand. And he gave him. Now, he brought him bread and wine, gave to Abraham. Abraham took it, ate it, and gave him tithes of all. Meaning, when the Lord gives you victory, refreshes your body, you hold him with your tithes. The man didn't ask for tithes. But he gave it to him and he collected them. He gave him tithes of all. You see, when you are still bothered, still troubled by the issue of tithes, you know the problem? You are a babe. That's just the truth. It's not, it's not, it's not the scales falling off your eyes. It's not a new rema. Is a realm of stinginess. You're just stingy. The tithe is not the problem. It's that you are stingy. The Lord gave Abraham. Did the Lord ask him? If you think it's only when the pastor preaches on tithe that you tithe, then you're, the man was not taught. He just brought tithe of all and gave to Melchizedek. And he collected it. And blessed be the most high God, which had delivered the enemies. He blessed him, and he left. Must I pay it? The problem is not the question. Is that you are stingy. Just accept that you are stingy. Even when you have not given it. Are you still okay? You are still not okay. It's still not enough. So you thought... If you don't give it, it will be enough. Still not enough. Tell your neighbor, respect yourself and give your tithes. <laughs> Think we're going to say, well, you're going to be cursed. No curse. There's nothing. You, the only thing is that you just don't understand what is wrong with you. In G believer. It's not an it's issue. Not an issue. Gradually, Gradually it has died in the body of Christ. People are no longer. Mm -hmm. There was a time he was really in the middle of the I didn't cry like I didn't cry like I In the midst of his supposed fighting, I think I think I think I was looking at men. Men who make that don't talk. They don't come out. Why would they come out there? It's an issue, it's a family issue. You see me and my dad. So why should I give it to you? Why should I come and discuss it? Or something I should discuss. I give it I give it a walk off. So you, so you me, ask me, do you pay your tithe? Why, why, why are you asking me? It's a personal, it's a personal issue. issue. If, your if your daughter, as a whole, if your daughter grows up, maybe 25, maybe 25 and she got married, and, and the man fulfilled all the marital rights, and you handed over your daughter to, to the, man. the man, her husband, and you went home. After, After two weeks, you now call your daughter. I say, well, I hope, I hope he's not touching me. Who has a problem? <laughs> so, what is she doing there? <laughs> but you collected all rights and handed over 
your daughter to him. Are you with me? So whatever that happens, there's between the two of them. It's none of your business. You have collected your, your rights. It's none of your business. So now, I shouldn't come out on, on air and start discussing private matter. My third, first truth, they are, they are, are you getting what I'm saying now? It's not, it's not something I should come out and make public. If I make public, I've received my reward. The Lord who sees my, honors me openly. Then, you know, so anyway, back to the, to the, the, the guy gave his tithe and he blessed him, but he came with bread and wine. This is the first picture of the communion that was given. But this is sacred. And the real thing is, I told you growing up, we'll go to church and they'll tell us, you cannot receive the communion if you have not confessed your sins. You go for confession before you receive the communion. So we were taught that if you fail, miss the confession, and you take the communion, you die. So did I tell you how that one day, I've told you before, I went to take it. So I wanted to see if truly I would die. <laughs> so I lost so between them. But I was, but I was really scared. scared. But the truth, but the truth is, is, I got home. I was afraid, I was afraid, afraid to sleep. Because <laughs> I, I thought I if sleep. I sleep, they'll just come, they'll just come and kill me. So I stayed, so I stayed up. You can, you can, you can imagine I was so wise, me and God. And, and God, was, God in was in heaven just looking at me, laughing. Like, look at, like, look at this guy. So I stayed, so I stayed awake. I enrolled you, Kale. Waiting for that spirit that would just come and say, Did you take the communion with us? You seen, you seen, you seen. Ah. So I waited. And because I kept asking myself, but I didn't do anything, Zev. There was no sin. They say unknowingly, knowing, knowing. I did not sin. No sin. So I want, so to, I want know. to know why. How many of you are with me? Yes. So, finally, so finally, I got, I got to a point, point I stayed awake. The sleep, the sleep took me. So I, so I slept up. I slept very well. In between the sleep, you know, early hours of the morning, I remembered, hey, I was supposed to be dead. So I opened my eyes, look at a man who's supposed to die. Can you, can you imagine? So I said, no, no, I'm supposed to, nah, if I'm dead, what? I just opened my eyes. I did not die. So I'm alive. Then I raised this hand, yeah, raise this one, raise this leg, raise this leg. Within me, I just said, these people lied. It's either they lie or they don't know. So I just stayed on one of the fence. They don't know. I don't want to believe they lied because they did all of those things to help us. It was, the ritual was so real. The sacredness. But I believe that they didn't know. And that continued to be a problem. Many years after, when we started fellowship, in the evening, we would take communion because it's usually good in the evening, scripturally. So I remember a brother then also who came, he, he, he used to attend before they changed the name Osu, you know, he was in the, in the campus and, you know, we would go there for, for meetings and all of that. So he came that evening and he wouldn't take the communion because he was from this our former church. So he wouldn't take the communion also. So I observed him from afar and I've been observing that each time he comes from their chapter, he will not take the communion. So one day I approached him and said, he said, you know, Pastor, um, you know, being a student, there's some, I, I, I don't feel free taking the communion because of the issue of sin, and I don't want to really die. You know, so I said, oh, okay, you don't want to die, so the sin. So I didn't have the time to tell him my experience, that I also wanted, there was a time I thought I was going to die, but I survived the death. Maybe if I tell him, maybe God had mercy on me, maybe he might try it and just die, so let's just leave it there. So I wasn't sure too. Then I was, at, I, I was invited to one Anglican church, and when I got there, they were to take communion too. I was to minister after that. And by the time they were to take that, the priest came out and said, if you are unholy, don't come now because something. He said, nah, 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 wah, wah, wah. I went for a program in Abba, and a girl finished committing fornication and came and took the thing. And on the spot, she died. I stepped back. 
I now spoke to myself, ah, this is tough. And it's on this altar that I'm going to be ministry. Then this altar that is killing Maybe I will just tell them to just shift my own um, pulpit to this side so that that man that kills people and his altar will just remain like that. Because already he has struck it, the fear was much. So people were coming. They said, the way they're coming. So me, I was just looking. I said, no, don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. So the issue of sin and communion goes together. The reason most times people don't take it is not because of the environment or because they don't like the man of God. No, down within them, there is the issue of sin. If I take this thing, will I die? And this is stemming from a scripture. Oh, Jesus. Are you ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. Look at the scripture. You will see it. It's this scripture. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-seven. Can we can we read together like you know people who are alive? Let's go. One, two, go. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. 28. Let's keep reading. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Did you notice the examine yourself? 30. Okay, 29. For he, let's go. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, Eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Consequences. 30. For this cause. Come on, let's go. One, two, go. For this cause. Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Please, the word sleep means dead. So can you see that I wasn't far from the truth? What they taught me, they were right, that I would die. Because they saw it here, many are weak and sickly, and many die. Now, let's go back to verse 27. Let me show you where they got that issue of sin from. It's from a word, 27. Let's read it again. One, two, go. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. 28. I want you to read it like you are alive. Let's shout. One, two, go. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So there are two words now, very important. Everybody open your eyes and watch me. Go back to 27. The issue of sin now is gotten from this word. Can we read together now? One, two, go. Wherefore, Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of God unworthily. Stop. That's the word. Write it in your Bible, in your book now. On what? Write it with a capital letter. Unworthily. So they say, Are you worthy? Do you notice he says unworthily? He didn't say unworthy. Come on here. Do you notice he said unworthily? He didn't say unworthy. Unworthily and unworthy are not the same. Uh, get me by. Unworthily and unworthy are not the same. That is why he now says, another word there is 28. Look at verse 28. Let's read together again. One, two, go loud. But let a man examine himself before you drink it. Examine yourself. So they say, you see, 
So now we are not examining ourselves. They are helping us to examine me. Whether I am, whether I am what? So, go back to 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, unworthily, unworthy, are not the same. So, let's put on on. If you remove on here, you have worthily and worthily. So the man is saying, if you drink it unworthily. So what is this guy saying? Then he tells us in verse 28 to examine ourselves. So I'm examining myself. There's sin in my life, so I won't take it. That is not what Paul meant. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 29, you will see that word again. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Why? Because he did not discern. Because he did not discern. I thought you would have told us, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, Eaten and drinking damnation to himself because he sinned. English now. If unworthily is sin, what the man would have told us is he that eateth and drinketh in an unworthy manner, eateth and drinketh damnation because he committed sin. But that's not what he said. He says, because he discerneth not the body. He eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning. So the problem is the unworthily. The inability of the church fathers over the years to capture the true meaning of that word so the problem has never been seen the problem is not discerning the lord's body so let's go back to verse 27 let me do a clean justice to this so you understand what it means can we read together everybody loud and clear one two go Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, you shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. The word unworthily is from the Greek word anasios. Anasios. Are you with me? Ancios. And that word means irreverently. That means to take reverence away from something. Irreverently. Irreverently. Can I give you to this English what it means? Not to cast the proper respect not to give it its rightful place not to respect it the way it should if your sin can affect the communion then the communion is not strong enough if your sin oh i thought you would lift your two hands and say thank you jesus this is liberation this is freedom. If your sin can affect the blood and the blood, hey, the blood and the body of Christ, if your own sin 
I know people are waiting for me and they are going to nail me. Look at what he's saying. Look at, he called himself a pastor. It's not what I'm saying. I'm giving more light. You will see what the, we're going to look at another translation. You will see it. If your sin and iniquity can affect the communion, then Jesus Christ and his sacrifice was all in vain. And I see us irreverently. That means the way and manner in which you handle the communion. What is the spirit behind your taking it? How do you see it? Do you cast the respect upon it that it should hold? Well, it's a lie. That's not what the Bible says. Can we, can we, can we, can we throw more light? Let's, let's look at something. The night, the night before he was to be betrayed was the night they took the communion. Hmm? He broke bread. This is my bread, my body that was broken for you. Give them. Eat. This is my cup of the New Testament. They drank. He now finished. He turned to Judas and said, that which you want to do, go and do quickly. So the guy had planned to kill Christ and had collected money. So he was in sin. He was supposed to confess first before he take the communion. That's an apostle. You are a member. That's an apostle. You are a member. You are giving them license to sin. I don't say license. I'm not in last month office. That's an apostle. Who sold the one who owns the blood and the body. And he took it. And Jesus never said, you are not worthy to take it. No. He broke the bread and he gave him. And Jesus said, the one who will, who will, who will sell me. The one who will betray me. Among us, Peter said, ah, even with all this, we will chop. Who be that? Master, tell me what happened. So, in the midst of that, they were still committing sin. And Jesus said, the one who dipped his hand into the bowl well with me. And it was Judas. He told them and said, that which you want to do, go and do quickly. And he stood up. He's, that means a man can stand up from communion and go commit murder. leave Sunday service and go for a date. Is it Pastor Bina? Why are you calling me everything? Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. And we came in. You leave the communion table, we just finish. My God and my Lord, thank you Lord. And straight to be a parlor. Madam, two more bottles. So why are you calling my name? Have I Presented well? Have I not preached well? Have I not taught well? Have I not told you live right? What else? Will I follow you? Favor be going, I'm following you. Some will fight on the road after the communion. What? Back where communion, what you are I mean, in fact, to worsen it, that person was the one who served the table. He said, I know the highway they look me now. Because now I meet this this bread today, have you? I go forget that thing. Who's you slap? You know, people say, he, he, they, they, they. Hold this Bible. Hold this Bible. <laughs> I mean, that's the person who served the table. Judas left there. Thomas, sorry. Left there. No, it was Judas. Left there and went straight. To collect the money and came back and told him, the one I kiss, hold him tight. And the plan had been going on before the communion. Jesus didn't say, now we're about to take communion. Confess. And Judas, if Judas had confessed, he wouldn't have sold Christ. So he would have aborted the plan. Anasius. It is irreverent. Reverence what you can. 
it is not the sin. Come on, am I making sense here this morning? It is not the sin. That is why he now says in verse 28, let the man examine himself. Not search me, O oh God, whether there be sin in me. Mm -mm. You are missing it. Search me, O oh God. Look at it in verse 28. But let a man examine himself. And so, after you are done examining yourself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. He now continues in verse 29 again to bring the subject of unworthy. Come on. Anasios comes back again. For he eateth and drinketh Anasios. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Why? It is not because of your sin now. Because you did not discern. You didn't cast reverence on the Lord's body. You didn't reverence the thing. So because of that, the consequences is in verse 30. You will fall sick. Many among you are falling sick. So a man is taking communion that is supposed to replenish. But yet the sickness refuses to go. Because it does not cast respect. Am I helping somebody? <laughs> but I've been taking it. It's not working. No respect. It's not your sin. In fact, when you know you have sinned, there's no amount of us that can even sin. What, can, what is your sin? Paul said, I am the chief of all sinners. That means the man went into all record. <laughs> and check people's sin. Check do maybe sin. Check a man's sin. Check a, check calculate all of them. Which, um, uh, uh, prophet and his, calculate all of them. He said, no, no, get, no, get with. He says, but I have mercy. Because I did them in ignorance. If he could obtain and his mercies are ever new, who would be you? So the issue is not the sin. The issue is the manner in which you take. Let's now, Pastor Bina, keep quiet. Mm. Let's read. Amplified, verse 27. I will not talk again. We will just read together. And let's see if the Amplified will cast the same meaning that I cast. Let's see. Whether it's sin. If it shows me it's sin, then I will, I, will, I will ask for forgiveness and tell you I've been a wrong pastor or that you should forgive me. I will go back to Bible school and allow the elders to teach me very well. And whatever the Holy Spirit has been teaching me has been totally wrong. I submit to. Now, let us go. 27, you drop to verse 30. Kill us, share God. Drop to 27. So then, let's read together. Everybody want to go. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him, not you. You are not the object of the matter. It is him. I thought it's you. Who, comes, who are you? can you, 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 how can you and all the sacrifice on the cross, you? While we were yet sinners, he saw all of them. He died. And he took his blood. He shadow, 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 over shadow, over powder, and now said, it is finished. Which means the blood, the extra, cannot no matter the sin of the world put together. He now became the propitiation. The sacrifice. He became. He now gave us the, an advocate. And said I'm giving you an advocate. I'm an advocate with the father. On your behalf. In case you fall into sin. I am your lawyer. So your sin is not my problem. It is the manner in which you treat me. I'm justified. I'm justified. I'm justified. See? It's not me. The Lord, he says, so then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against who? The body and blood of the Lord. You think it's not good enough? Continue. Verse 28. Amplified. Let's continue. 
Let a man thoroughly examine himself. Watch this now. And only when he has done, so should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Only when he has done what? Examine himself. Whether I am treating it in the manner that he should. Do you know, there are times you want to take the communion. Break it, break it quickly, quickly, quickly. You break it. Let's drink. He says, that's an unworthy manner. He says, you will force ego. Death will pursue you. It's not, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Father, I'm a fornicator. Oh Lord, oh Kwamda, oh, I'm an adulterer. Him now, Kwanika, who are Come on, money, face, power. Oh, oh Lord, I'm a stealer. I'm a thief. People phone. Mokoma, Motiyo, oh Lord, Kwamda. Father, I'm, I keep malice. 300 years is in my heart. Father, oh, forgive me. No, that's not what he's talking about. Are you following me? That's not what Jesus is saying. All right, 29. The Amplified. Watch this. We're still looking unworthy. Have we? Let's look at 29. For anyone who eats, watch this, and drinks without discriminating and recognizing with due appreciation that it is Christ's body, eat and drink a sentence, a verdict of judgment upon himself. Begin to clap for Pastor Obina. It's not me. It is simple. It's simple. That means I still retain the pastorate of this church. He <laughs> they pay you. <laughs> I'm still the pastor in charge. You are looking for a way to to to. I'm still the pastor. So you're seeing now it's discriminating and not recognizing with due appreciation. So today when you take the bread, don't, con it's, don't consider you, consider me. It is, I am the object of your worship. Not you. If your sin precedes the communion, it will be destroyed. If I precede the communion, I will be preserved. You learning? Clap for Jesus. That's all. Verse thirty. That careless and unworthy participation. That careless and unworthy participation. That careless. Bring them now. They don't. They pray. Bring the thing. And as soon as I go to the distance, no, no, okay. My takes more. Hmm. That careless. Is it not the bread? Throw and give them. <laughs> that careless and unworthy participation is the reason many of you are weak and sickly. And quite enough of you have fallen into the into what? Sleep of death. Sometimes I know what it looks like when I ask you to do it at home. We don't cast the respect. That's why this is coming. So you are taking communion, but there's no change in your body. Brother, it is the manner, not the sin. You are not giving it this first class appreciation in your life. Am I helping someone today? Yes, this message should go around. Immediately after the service, begin to send. Begin to share. Begin to tell people. Oh, I've seen the secret. I've seen it. I've seen it. You know now, they're telling us how we must position ourselves and sit. Please, it's very important. Because it's going around now. Some of us, I was watching Wednesday, I saw someone chewing gum. The gum was who? You don't need it, so we'll just sit down anyhow. So please. <laughs> so it's not 
Tell your neighbor, it's not the sin now. It is the manner, the treatment you give to it. Come on, did you, did you get that? Did you learn something? That's why you saw us in a bid to like rationalize our mind and bring it together. We had to now start having a girl, those who are self-righteous too. It is the manner. You saw people gossiping, they are collecting. Give me now. So as I was not telling you, that my neighbor now came. I said, now, 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 give me wine now. She said, I went past, I'll go, I'll pour for your body. Go back to verse 27. Let's try a message. If you are learning, say amen. amen. So in case I give you an assignment and I ask you, anyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the master irreverently, did you see what I'm saying? That's why I said, if, if, you, if, if we discover anything and you notice it was Pastor Bina that got it wrong, just tell me, and I will stop the, being the pastor of the church. And I can make you the pastor. You teach us the word. And, but if I'm right, guy, you must listen when I talk. Anyone who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the master irreverently, it's like part of the crowd that jed and spit on him at his death. Is that the kind of remembrance you want to be part of? 28. Examine your motives. I thought his sin, no. I was thinking it was my sin. Someone nigga. He says, examine your motive. Hey, what a wicked. <laughs> That's what he's saying. The motive, the prayer <laughs> behind. You know, they, 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 they are sharing the thing. They come to the quiet place. And maybe the person. Examine your motive. The next one, he says, what? Test your heart. With which litmus paper? Come to this meal in a holy hour. Just come. It's a holy meal. We have come to worship you. Everybody will just go like this. No, no don't, don't go. Just come down. Thank you. See him. That's what he's saying. Look at 29. If you give no thought or worse, don't care about the broken body of the master when you eat and drink, you are running the risk of serious consequences. So what you should be considering is him, not your sin. And this is what I didn't know then. If I'd known this, I would have taken a lot. Just near, 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 near. They didn't tell us. So if you are here, you think it's your, you first have to confess your sin before. No! You're wrong. That body was broken for you. Consideration should be him. Verse 30. That's why so many of you, even now, are listless and sick, and others have gone to an early grave. So they have the communion, but they die young. How can you, in, in that ICU, in the hospital, you have the communion and you still die? He says, the problem is not your sin. The problem is not the examination or the sickness. The problem is the irreverent motive of you handling. If this has taught you and blessed you, can you just give the Lord a gift? Verse 31. There's another thing I want to touch before we start taking because this has, I, I can see your spirit now. It has, the thing synced. And now whatever you do, honestly, doesn't matter the name of the sickness is going to be banished out of your life. Some of you, because many years ago I was asking the Lord, how much faith do I need to have to be healed of my ailment? And the Lord said, have you not read well? He said, go back to Mark. I went to Mark 11, and he says, as small as a grain of mustard seed. And he says, son, can I tell you what? I said, no, sir. Tell me. I want to know. He said, the moment you cast the object becomes you, you will never be healed. He said, take your eyes away from you 
having more faith, take your eyes away from you, having sin, take your eyes away from the sickness, cast it upon me. It says faith is just be looking at me. While we behold, we are changed. My subject became Jesus. Are you sick? Don't look at, don't say, I have four faith. I confess, I confess, I confess. No, just say, Lord Jesus, I adore. Lord Jesus, I adore your holy name. The more you keep looking. How did Peter began to sink when he took his eyes off? The more he keeps looking, he's walking. My eyes is on him, the author and the finisher. Oh, the preserver and the beginner. Keep looking. Let me run this quickly and we'll take the communion. Are you ready? Uh, are you ready? I like the way you're talking. Are you ready? Let me just touch this. I'd, I'd intended to touch this some weeks back. But it's all buried in this, the communion and the sin, so you understand. It's also the issue of penalty and consequences. I once told you. Penalty and consequences. The universe, I want you to know that penalty and consequences are not the same. Let it sink first. Because it's still under the issue of sin. Penalty and consequences are not the same. Pastor, what do you mean? You don't find the word penalty in the Bible. But you find a word used that is synonymous to the word penalty. And it is the word wages. So wages is penalty. Consequences are effect. So what am I saying? I said penalty... Give me Romans 6.23. Penalty is what? Wages. Consequences are what? Effects. Be sharp. For the wages of sin is what? Death. The penalty of sin is death. Look up. Look up. Look up. Don't, don't rush me. I rush me. Just watch this. Did you notice... It is singular and not the plurality of sin. Please, take a look at it. Is it sins or sin? sin. So sin as a noun, not sins as a verb. So it is the singularity of sin and not the plurality of sins. There are no sins, plurality, without a sin, singularity. If there was no sin, singularity, there wouldn't have been sins as of plurality. So, if there was no sin as of the noun, there wouldn't have been the actions, verbs of sins. So, sin brought about many sins. He didn't say the wages of sins is death. Uh -uh. What he came to deal with was not the sins of lying, adultery, fornication, abortion, drinking, killing. No. What he came to deal with was the sin. That sin. What is that sin? That's the penalty. That one is alienation from God. For all have sinned and come short alienated. From the glory of God. My father, my father. Why hast thou forsaken me? Alienated because he became sin. As long as there was no sin. He had a close relationship with his father. One with him. 
The moment there's sin, there's distance. That sin that brought about the many sins were the disobedience. And Adam ate of the forbidden fruit and his eyes opened. He didn't commit fornication, adultery, he didn't kill. He only ate. When you go back, the Bible tells us he disobeyed. It was a sin of disobedience. The not acknowledging God as God. To whom you yield yourself becomes your master. So he left the yielding of God to the yielding to Satan. That's the sin. That sin brought about the sins. So the penalty brought about the consequences. The penalty, which we call wages, brought about the effect. Now, the argument over the years has been this. Look up, look up. They say, Jesus Christ does not They give an example, okay? Let me give an example. A lady was deceived by a guy. I want to show you penalty and consequences. A lady was deceived by a guy at her young age, probably 14, 15, and she allowed this guy have his way and this virgin her broke her virginity huh that is more like the sin that's the wage which is they are trying to i'm showing you the school of thought what they define now after some months the girl discovered she had contacted hiv from that union. The HIV became the effect, the consequences of that sin. Now they say, in the forgiveness of sin, he forgives the sin, but the effect lives with you. Anima Sutta. Huh? Another example, the way you are looking at me today. The prodigal son went to his father in Luke 15. I'm coming home. I was scattered. We, we separated. Because I am from another school of thought. Where I came from is far. Listen, the anointing of me is ancient. It's not today. The prodigal son in Luke 15 came to his father and said, divide me the inheritance and give me mine. So the father gave him his money. The guy went and lavished it, sinned, became poor. But every day the father would come and look out waiting. So one day he came back, love accepted him. He forgave him his sin. When he forgave him the sin, what about the money, the effect? He didn't come back. Penalty, consequences. David committed sin. Psalm 51, in sin, mother conceived me. Huh? He slept with who? Bathsheba, you remember? And the wife of Uriah. And she conceived. He killed the man. The consequences was that she came back and said, I was pregnant. So the baby was the consequences, the effect of the sin. So now they tell us, it is true that Jesus forgives sin. But you will live with the consequences and the effect. I smoked until I contacted and noticed I had tuberculosis. My heart started shrinking. And I was dying. The effect or the consequences of, of smoking. So now, Jesus, I have accepted Jesus Christ. But I continue to cough. 
as a result of the consequences of my sins. Then it simply means, give me the amplified, there is a problem with this. I want you to know one thing today. Jesus came. He's... <sighs> ah, for the wages which sin pays is death. But the bountiful free gift of God is eternal life. Through, through in union with Jesus Christ our Lord. Give me, the, give me the message. So now, he's telling us that when he has to do with the penalty, the wages, that was what Jesus paid. Jesus paid. And he exhausted his payment. Work hard for sin your whole life. And your pension is death. But God's gift is real life, eternal life, delivered by Jesus, our master. I want to open your eyes now. Church, are you ready? Look at this. This is the gospel truth which I stand for, and I want you to believe it and take it home. Jesus not only took away the penalty, which is the wages, he also gave us out. Of the consequences which are the effect. One of such solution is the communion. Wow. Wow. That a guy who's on the bike stole the bike and was running, come down, come down, and fell and broke his leg. So he sinned, and the consequences is that he's going to use the crutches forever. Forever. No. Not until you stumble on Psalm 103 from verse 1. Let me show you Psalm 103 from verse 1. Psalm 103 from verse 1. Oh, when the Lord is your name. Hiya. What a joy and rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. We will stand and shout victory. The psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Somebody say amen. amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all, all, all his benefits. What are they? Who forgiveth thy iniquities, wages, who healeth all thy diseases, consequences. He forgives your sins, he heals your diseases. He will forgive you for smoking and will take care of your tuberculosis. He will forgive you for committing fornication and he will heal your HIV. He has the same power. He said that you may know that the son of man had the power to forgive sin. He told the guy, rise up and walk. Oh God. But the penalty and the consequences, his blood was able. Come on, celebrate Jesus. His blood was able. Am I helping someone here? There are things. That's why he gave us. I said that one of the beauty of this is that he gave us the communion. When you take the communion. Pastor, you will not understand. I was a prostitute in the past. Before I came. Did you just say before you came? Before you came? Thank you, Jesus. It was before you came. You are the one in your mind. Can I tell you something? Don't call to remembrance what God has forgotten. I used to be, does not exist in the kingdom. It is what are you now? Oh, Romans, Romans, oh Jesus. Chapter 8 and verse number 10. Oh, mentakus parila. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. The truth shall make you free. I'm free. I'm a free man. Oh, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm so free. Freer than the bed. I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I, 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 so free. So free. Send just so free. So free. Penalty, consequences, Jesus. How can you take away my wages and you are using your stick to look for my effect? Do you not know that I'm powerless? Jeremiah 10, 24, 25. It is not in man to help himself. If you need power to help myself, why did you come? But I came to you because I'm powerless. You, got, you gave me your power. You strengthen me. They say if you teach like this, you will let the people fly. Brother, fly. Sister, fly. I said verse 10, verse 10, fly. Lift your right hand and say, I fly. I fly. They did not say, they knew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. To do what? Why are you giving me wings as eagles for? If you don't want me to fly. <laughs> and if Christ be in you. Hello? Let me watch them from here. Where are those that have Christ in them? I want them to stand up and stand like this. If you have Christ in you, stand up and stand like this. Malaba shataba. Read it together with so much boldness. Can we read it? One, two, go. And if Christ be in me. Can we do it again? One, two, go. And if Christ be in me. Uh -uh. Let's one, two, go. And if Christ be in me. The body is what? Dead. Because of what? Sin. Not sins, sin. Sin has destroyed the body. He says, let's finish the rest. One to go. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Celebrate. You will not die. I said you will not die. I said you will not die. Oh, it doesn't matter what they saw in your body. You will not die. You will live. You will be strong. You are coming out stronger. Amen. Can you shout amen? amen? Give me the amplified. Let's read the amplified together. I'm done preaching. I'm done teaching. I just want to show you this. I'm done. But if Christ lives in you, then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt, sin, wages, and consequences. <laughs> The spirit will give it life because of the righteousness. What righteousness? The one is imputed to you, not the one you perform by yourself. Not because I am like this. The one he imputes, that's a gift. Lift your two hands and let's shout. He imputes righteousness. He imputed it. Don't know the Bible they read. Let me borrow you a scripture. Psalm 32 from verse 1. Oh. Imputed righteousness. Nandi Boskevani Kalaska. Blessed, happy, fortunate. No, no, no. Give me amplified. Blessed. For happy, fortunate, to be envied is he who has forgiveness of his transgression continually exercised upon him. Whose sin is covered. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the one 
to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Lift your two hands. Can you just thank him? Can you thank him? Tell him I'm grateful. For your sacrifice, I'm grateful. For your grace, I am grateful. For your goodness, I am grateful. The ones you loved have come to worship you. The ones 